Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. The topic that we are going to cover today is Unicast Routing Protocols. It has been taken from chapter 11 of the TCP IP Protocol Suit Book. Before beginning this chapter, let us discuss some of the basic topics. We already know that internet is a combination of networks connected by routers. When a datagram goes from a source to a destination, it will probably pass through many routers until it reaches the router attached to the destination network. The next topic that we are going to cover today is cost or metric. Cost or metric are values that are used by routers to find the best path to a destination network. Then we have static versus dynamic routing tables. A routing table can either be static or dynamic. A static table is one with manual entries and a dynamic table is one that is updated automatically whenever there is a change in the internet. The next topic is routing protocols. These routing protocols have been created in response to the demand for dynamic routing tables. A routing protocol is a combination of rules and procedures that lets router in the internet inform each other of changes. Okay, now we are going to see what autonomous systems are. An autonomous system is a group of networks and routers under the authority of a single administration. Let's see what an autonomous system looks like. As you can see here, we see a collection of routers and these are networks. And they are under the authority of a single administration. Let us look at some other autonomous system. As you can see here, these are a collection of routers along with networks. And this autonomous system, they are under a single administration. Now, as we can see that this autonomous system are connected to each other. This is connected through inter-system connection. That is this one. Now, if you want to route inside an autonomous system, this is known as intra-domain routing and if we want to route between the autonomous system this is known as inter-domain routing now let us see some popular routing protocols as we can see that the routing protocols are divided into two parts intra-domain and inter-domain as we have previously discussed and within intra-domain we see two parts distance vector routing protocol and the link state routing protocol in interdomain we have only one that is the path vector protocol now let us show an example of distance vector link state and path vector protocol so for distance vector we have rip which is also known as routing information protocol for link state we have ospf which is open shortest path first protocol for path vector we have bgp which is known as border gateway protocol so all of this are based on the distance vector, link state and path vector protocols. Now moving on to the main topic which is distance vector routing. This distance vector routing as has already been mentioned is for, of intra-domain routing protocol. In this distance vector routing, we use Bellman Ford. This is a graphical representation of Bellman Ford graph. Here the nodes can be referred to as routers and the edges can be referred to as networks. So in Belmontford algorithm, what we usually do is we usually find a source and from that source we find the shortest path to all the nodes that are present in the network. So let's assume that source here is A. A is the source here. So from this source A, we will find the shortest path to all the other nodes which are B, C, D and E. So in order to find the shortest path what do we need to do is we need to calculate how many paths are there from the source to B, C, D or E. So let's assume we take A and B. So from A and B we, we can see that there are two paths. One is the direct path which is 7. And another is the path which goes through C. It is from A to C 5, from C to B 4. So 5 plus 4 gives us 9. So here 7 is 
less than 9 and the shortest path from A to B will be 7. Similarly, for from A to C, we see that there are 1 and 2 paths. That the first path is from A to C and the second path is from A to D to C. So from A to C, we have 2 paths. And the cost of the first path is 5, which is from A to C. And through D, we have 3 and 1 which is 4. So 3 plus 1 is 4. And here 4 is less than 5. So the shortest path from A to C will be 4. Here it is 7. Similarly, in D, we can see the shortest path is 3. And for E, we can see the shortest path is uh, from here, from A, it goes from 3 to which is 5. Also, it can go from here here and here which gives us 3 plus 1 plus 4 8 so the shortest path should be 5 from a to e we can see that there can also be many other paths but we have only shown for 2 and we just found out that 5 will be the shortest now we will see the main fact behind Belmont-Ford algorithm here we can see that we have two nodes i and j we want to find the shortest path from i to j we can also see here that i has some neighbors which are labeled as 1 2 up to n now these neighbors already know the shortest path to j which are d 1j d 2j and d n j and we already know the cost from i to its neighbors which are c i 1 c i 2 up to c i n now in order to find the shortest path from i to j we need to calculate the cost of each of this path so how can we calculate the cost of each of this path we can see right from here so the first path we can calculate is c i 1 plus d 1 j the second path is c i 2 plus d 2 j and it goes on like this so the shortest path can be calculated from all of these paths what we have to do is we have to find the minimum of all of this path that will be the shortest distance from i to j now moving on to the distance vector routing algorithm each router individually executes the bellman ford algorithm the cost is measured by hop counts what is hop counts hop counts are basically the amount of network the packet has traversed so here we can see that there are network 1 and network 2 so a packet if it wants to go from here to here it needs to travel one two networks so the hop count is 2 now the cost between any two neighbors as we can see is placed as 1 now each router needs to contain three information. They are destination network, cost and the next hop. After a router has updated its routing table, it should send the result to its neighbor so that the neighbors can update their routing tables. Now we can see an autonomous system here where we have a collection of routers and networks. We can see here we have five routers here A, B, C, D, and E. And we have seven networks here network 1, network 2, network 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Now let us see at the routing table of router A. So in router A, we, as we have already mentioned, there needs to be three information one is the destination network the other is the cost and the third one is the next hop so we can see four networks that is network 1 network 2 network 4 and 5 are directly connected to router a so since they are directly connected the cost to go to each of this network from router a will be 1 and since we can directly go from router a to this network there should not be any next hop 
so the next hop are given as dash that that indicates that we can directly travel from this router to this networks similarly for routing table b c d and e it has been initialized as like that now if router a wants to send its routing table to router b what it will do is firstly it will send its records one by one to router b so firstly uh, the router a will send its record that is network one cost one to router b after router b receives this packet this record what it will do is it will check its routing table to see if this record is there or not since this record is there isn't there routing uh, router b will add it will add this record to its routing table now as we can see here the cost was one but the routing in the routing table of router b the cost became two so when we will be adding a non-existing record into a routing table we will always increment its cost by one and the next stop is set as a because this record was sent from the routing router a now this second record will be sent from router a to router b after router b receives this record it will again check its routing table if this is there or not since this record is already there so what it will do is it will add the new records cost by one and it will see if the cost is lower than the old record now if we want to add if we increment the cost by one it becomes two and the old record cost is one so since the old record cost is low the router b will not change its routing table it will keep the old record only if the new records cost was lower than the old record then the router will change its routing table with the new record as we can see here the routing table b did not change the routing table for the new record now the third record which is network 4 will be sent to router b and as usual router b will check its routing table and see if it's there or not since network 4 isn't there in the routing table this record will be added to the routing table as you can see here this is added and the cost has been incremented by 1 and the next hop has been sent set as a so the last record will be sent and after b receives it it will again check its routing table it sees that the uh, record is not there so it will add it to its routing table as we can see here the cost has been incremented by 1 and the next hop has been set as a moving on to the next portion that is updating the routing table we can update the routing table in two ways firstly if the record is found in the routing table or if the record is not found in the routing table we have seen two of these cases in the previous example now if the record is found in the routing table what we do is we increment the new cost by one and check with its old cost now if the new cost value is less than the old cost then we replace the record in the routing table else we don't the next one is if the next hop in the new record is same then we choose the record even if the cost is infinity we haven't seen this instance now but we will see in the next videos now if the record is not found in the routing table what we did was we simply added the record to the routing table now moving on to the final routing tables from the autonomous system that we have already seen earlier here as we have already mentioned that there are five routers and seven networks here so the final routing table for router a will be this one so as we can see here in the final routing table of A and in the initial one, the already existing networks are here as well. Network 1, Network 2, Network 4 and Network 5. Now 
the networks that were added by different routers were network 3, network 6 and 7. As we can see here, the network 6 and 7 were added by the routing table of router C. So here what we see that in routing table of router C, there were two networks, network 6 and 7, which were not available in router A's routing table. So when router C sends its routing table to router A, router A adds the network 6 and 7, 6 and 7 to its routing table, increment its cost by 1, which becomes 2, and in the next hop, sets its next hop as C. Also, the network 3 was added by the routing table of router B. The cost was incremented by 2 and the next hop was set as B. Now, the final routing table for router B, as we have already seen earlier, that network 1, 4 and 5 were added by the routing table of router A and the existing network 2, 3, and 6 are in the final routing table of B as in the initial one. So the network 7 was added by routing table C. So the cost was incremented by 1 and the next hop was set as C. Now similarly for C, it was done like that. So in C, we see that network 5, 6 and 7 already existed so network 5 6 7 also exists in the final routing table now the network 1 2 and 4 were added because when router a sends its routing table to c then c will update its routing table by adding the networks 1 2 and 4 and also incrementing its cost by 1 which then becomes 2 2 2 Sorry, this one will not be this, this one will be. And the next hop is set as A, A and A. Now, the network 3 was added when the router B sends its routing table to router C. So, the cost was incremented by 1 and the next hop was sent by B. Since this network was added when router B sends its routing table to C. Now, what you can do is you can figure out the final routing tables of D and E. The next portion that we are going to cover is when to update the routing table. First one is the periodic update which is a router sends its routing table normally 30 seconds in a periodic nature. The second one is triggered update which is a node sends its routing table to its neighbors any time when there is a change in its routing table. So basically it means that whenever there is a change in the network, the routers are triggered to send its routing table to all of the neighbors in the network. Thank you very much. This will be all for today's class.